Hey guys, welcome to part 9 of the C Sharp Beginner series and today we're going to be looking into operators or the things that you will do um, day to day in Unity which require you to perform an action and that's probably the best way to describe an operator. An operator might be a sort of multiplication or a division, adding something together, checking whether something is greater than something else. Um, you can you know, check within if statements to see if um, you know something's equal to something else or if you've got something else or you can you know add increments to one another so I'll go through some examples as I've got here I made a little example so you can see this visually what's going on so we'll write in code some calculation and then I've got a little button which just runs the piece of code and puts it outputs it into the little box. So if you're going to do something more with operators, you can create your own script. You can right click on the project panel, go create and choose C sharp. Or you can add this to pre-existing scripts. But I will show you an example of, uh, you know, what we can do to make this happen. So in my script here is don't really worry about the two functions that I've got here because these just control the UI I was talking about which controls you know when we press the button it'll do something so all I've got is I've got just a, a public uh, method which is calling my button and it just displays the output of whatever our sums going to be or what operator sort of code we're going to write and the clear button just clears it and we're going to write our own function like in previous tutorials called your operators and that's what we're going to use to use in this tutorial and I'll just knock those down so you don't have to really look at those so what you can do is create I'm going to create our own method and call it your operators just so this is the example for today and we use two brackets and two curly brackets below and all I've got is I've got a private float final sum and this is going to be the thing that's going to output into our box so when we use operators we need to sort of to give some examples we need some values um, you know to be able to start doing stuff so like we've done in previous videos we'll start by writing a private float and then I will give it a name of a and set that equal to one and these are just going to be some examples of you know just variables that we could use which might hold some information and I'm just gonna write a few and just have see this many so I've got a b c uh, d and they're all a float value so they all hold decimal place values and the each of them are equal a different uh, number so let's say we want to do something and the most common or the most basic operator just like you would with maths is a plus and a minus so you might do um, so we can output into the box we'll say that final sum because final sum doesn't currently have any value given to it so we want to say that final sum equals a plus b and we'd expect that when we test it um, based on the button that we press a plus b so a is one b is two and we'll get three so if we minimize that press play on our on our game that we've got and you can see it here you can see my calculation i'll press the button we get three so that's exactly what we expected and the reason why we get that output in that box is because when we press the button it play it looks at this calls this function here it runs the function your operators your operator sets the value of final sum based on what um you know expression we put here and then outputs it into that text box so you know i'll give you another example just like we could do before we could do b and we could do b minus a so what do we expect we expect two minus one we expect the calculation just to be one perfect that's exactly what we expected to happen so it's all working as we expected for a basic operator like that, which is a plus or minus, which is often classed, uh, classed as an additive sort of operator. Now we can, I'll comment that out so we don't get, it doesn't get in the way. We can do a similar thing. So we can say that final sum equals, and then we might want to do C times D. Just the same with plus or minus with sort of basic uh, mathematics you've got a time symbol on your keyboard which is just the star above your eight key normally and what that would be would be the 
c times d so it'd be 3 times 4 so what do we expect to see we expect to see 12 in the output so what we'll do is we'll go back into here again we'll play we'll go on the calculation it outputted 12 perfectly that's exactly what we're looking for we can do the same here we can say that um, now we could potentially say that d and we can do divided by b so it would be 4 divided by 2 and what do we expect to see 2 and there we go in the calculation we get 2 um, those are probably some of the most basic operators that you will find plus minus and then division and multiplication now you can do things which um, check to see whether something's greater than something else so then we could say something like if um, b is greater than um, c then we could have put two curly brackets below and say that final sum is equal to 4 for instance so this is another common thing that you will do um, you will do a, a greater than a less than so what do we expect we expect that if b is greater than c which it isn't so we don't expect it to output anything into the actual game so it outputs zero because nothing was actually bigger than it, it shouldn't be allowed it's a zero or one it's not true but then again if we do c if c is greater than b for instance which we expect to happen we expect to output four and which it did and exactly the same if we go back into our script we can do a, a less than symbol or more commonly is that you can do less than or equal to or you can do for instance if c is greater than or equal to b and then we can do some sort of calculation here and as it suggests if c is less than or equal to b because sometimes you need some more accuracy if you're doing specific things that maybe increment up and down and you want to check if it directly hits on a particular value or not because if it's just less than it can be less than in decimal places and it can make your calculation a bit more construed let's say so what we could do is we could get rid of those because they're simple things it's if you need to check you know if one value is below another and then you might want to do something in your game say if your health is below a certain value you could say that if health is this is only a sort of pseudo code so code that we haven't written out is less than or equal to sort of 10 then you might want to you know show up a warning to say that your health's low now you can get something which also is quite important you can say that if a is equal to b then we could do something within the brackets and say final sum is equal to four again but what this means is the double um, equal sign means if it's equal to each other so if a is equal to b or if a is the same value as b then we expect to output four but the problem with that is we expect that a is not the same as b so if we do calculation we will get zero and that's not right but let's say for instance that we made a new float value private float and we could say e and set that equal to one as well so if we say that a is equal to or equals equals to e we expect that to be true so it would output a value of four which it does like we expected similarly with that we can have something called so if we leave the a and the e together we can say an exclamation mark and an equal sign and that means that if it's not equal to so if a is not equal to e then we'll output four so what do we expect to see we expect to see that we're going to see a zero because it isn't true um a is equal to 4 so it can output that because it's asking you know am i not equal to this or i am equal to it so this isn't correct so if we say is a not equal to b 
then that would come out as true. Yes, it's not equal to the same value. So we would expect to do the calculation. And it outputs 4 because it, it, it wasn't the same. So that works perfectly. We can have some other common operators. Now what we can look at is we can say, and we can use two operators together almost, we can say that if A is equal to 1 and and B is equal to 2, then we can say that final sum should be equal to 4. So we're using 2 together now. So now we're saying that we're saying that if A is equal to 1 and so and the double and just means so we're checking both things together and b if b is equal to 2 then we'll output the final sum which will be 4 so we can look back in click the calculation and it will output 4 now for instance let's say if we go back into our script and say now that is a equal to 2 now we don't expect a to be equal to 2 b is equal to 2 but seeing as the, con uh, the two sort of conditions aren't correct so we'll clear that and we can see that it shouldn't be equal to anything and we output a zero. Now, similarly with an and and, we can do a or value, which is between your shift and your Z key, you can hold shift and press that button, which is a backslash and you create two straight lines, which is to symbol an operator of or. So we can say that if a is equal to 2 or b is equal to 2, then we will do the final sum. So if we go back to out, back into unity, we need to make sure we've got a value. We expect to see a value of 4. And there we go. We get the value of 4 out because one of the conditions that we've got here was true. So it was either one has to be true other than the and and symbol says that they've both got to be true. Another um, common operator that we could use is a plus plus and a minus minus, which just means it increments um, each value by one each time. Let's say, for instance, you did this final sum is equal to uh, final sum plus one. All that would mean is that we're incrementing final sum by one. Now, there's an easy way to do that without having to actually write that. We can just write final sum plus plus with a semicolon on the end. So what we could essentially do is we could put final sum plus plus into here. And we could slot it in under here and just pretty much say that and if we start off by saying that our um, final sum is equal to, let's say, 12. Now we've got this um, if statement which says if A is equal to 2 or B is equal to 2, then we'll do final sum plus plus. So if final sum starts off at 12 here, we expect that every time we press the button to test, it's going to add 1 to the value of final sum. So we expect to get 13, 14, 15 and so on. So make sure you save out your script. You can press play and what we expect to see is we expect to see a value of 13. So there you go, we had a value of 13. So it incremented the value. We can clear, we can press it again, we get 14, clear, 15, 16, 17. It's because it adds one each time to the value. And similarly, if we do a minus minus or a double subtraction, if you want to put it like that, we will get rid of one each time. And it just really depends on the sort of complexity of your code and what you want to achieve. So day to day when you're making your games, you will have um, um, addition and subtraction for maybe adding values together if you need to check something, um, multiplication and division um, if you need to, you know, affect something by a greater amount if you need to check whether one value is greater than another or less than that's often very important if you need to check if two values are equal to each other um, so if you check in to see if something's true and then something's above a, a, a score value you need to do something else or if something's not equal to or you check in to see if you should do this 
or you should do something else. And then you can you know, use the um, operator to um, increment the value by one each time, depending on what you want to do. So hopefully this sort of visual representation helped you out. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.